Good day, and this is Barack Caleb, PhD. And my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. We continue to work on the proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. And why am I so concerned about the prodigal son? Mainly because I did not know that for 60 years I was a prodigal son. Although I was born a Christian, raised a Christian, um, seven years in orphanage, Christian orphanage, went to seminary, Bible school. I did not realize after a certain time in my life that so much was different than what we were trained. And this is what is my biggest concern. As we watch President Donald Trump resign and finally take off to his private place, after the four years that he dominated politics in a way that we've never seen before, very unorthodox. But that is not the issue. The real issue is the enablers. What are the people doing that supported Mr. Trump? Those were the body of Christ. The majority of them were Christians out of all kinds of departments. Some of them Roman Catholics, some of them Mormons, some of them uh, Pentecostals, Baptists, and whatever. But anybody that believed that Mr. Trump was indeed a man called for by God. Reality is that we now have to face the consequences. As Mr. Trump sets up the insurrection on January the 6th, where are the leaders today? See, I am a person that has learned in life that you can make some big boo-boos, but God always forgives if you repent. And right now I'm talking to the body of Christ. I'm talking to those that are in leadership. I'm talking to those that were supporting Mr. Trump all the way because they had their own agenda. That is the biggest concern I have. Fellows, friends, Brothers in the Lord, what are we dealing with today? We are looking at politicians while we are supposed to look for the way, the truth and the light. And why is that so important? Now that is what we will be dealing with today. Let's take a look. My biggest concern has been actually the body of Christ. I mentioned that before. And why is that such a concern for me? See, when I was brought up, my mom passed away at age six. I was six years old and I was the oldest of five. 
Of course, that was hard on her. But as a kid, I didn't know that. So when my father remarried after seven years, I was 13 when they called me back home. I didn't fit in a home anymore. And so I had a very unusual upbringing and it's called the street. Now, some of you can relate to it because, you know, whoopie doo, you've been brought up that way as well. I had a chance to do some studies and go to middle uh, Middlebyer School in Holland and HBS. I went to the seminary and Bible school and later on I continued studying at uh, university courses for law. And as I progressed in life, I had always that one thing in my family life. I didn't know what a family was. So when I met people that had great families and big families, I was always gravitated to that. And now that I'm older, and that I've had my own family and have my own family for the past 45 years, I realize how important it is for God because God longs for his family. When he created us, he was awesome. He was by himself. He created something that was so beautiful, but it got interpreted a complete different way. And some of us don't even know how much hurt we caused the father. See, when I look at my children, my firstborn passed away in my arms when I, he was seven and a half months old. There was a mistake in the hospital and there was a combination. What it did to us, it caused me to look at life completely different. Because we were so-called successful early in life. I had all kinds of businesses involved in this and this and this, you know, financing, real estate and insurance a combination of, and things went well, we earned well. But when I had my little boy in my arms, I realized that no matter how much you earn, you won't be able to buy life back. And that changed our life. My wife and I, we sold everything, we went to Canada. That was not done just by accident, but we ended up in Canada. And as we started to rebuild, I noticed how much of an impact it was having the name of my father, although I had not much to do with him, but carrying on the name of my father helped me in Holland. But being in Canada, it meant nothing because nobody knew me. And it was a tough beginning. And I'm bringing it up, building it up to a level where you feel like, hey, hey, I am finally back to what I used to earn in Europe. And then to find out that you have to go back to school, another schooling, another document, and as you get your papers, you get all of a sudden attacked because other people are jealous. And it doesn't matter where you are. You could be in the United States. You could be in China. You could be in Africa. People are people. And so what I learned as I was traveling around the world and as I was raising my awareness about religion, because that has always had a tremendous interest for me, I realized that working in the prison ministry, people were all the same. And it didn't matter if I flew down and was in Hong Kong. The problems I had, I had inside of me. And that is the biggest problem that the majority of people are dealing with today. We have a problem and we don't realize that the problem is within us. But so is the answer. If we want an answer, the answer is within us. And then some people will say, well, that is so complicated. I don't understand what you mean. You see, everything that we touch is affected by the way we think. It's by the way we raise our own expectations. If I truly believe that I can do something, and now I'm talking about Zig Ziglar and all kinds of other motivational preachers, they will tell you, you can do it. You. But what I learned after a very prolonged challenge in court whereby we were almost in court for almost 20 years, 18 years, 12 years without lawyers, having to defend ourselves, I had to learn an awful lot of things in a hurry. And this is what I really came to understand, that a lot of the material that you have been told is not correct. What you just saw was the resignation of maybe stepping down of President Trump, and now the President-elect Biden, who is being sworn in today, it's amazing, but he has to reinstitute a lot of basics. 
And that is what we're dealing with today. The basics that we need to deal with are all within ourselves. Yes, folks. If you are desperate, you got to learn to listen to the voice of God. And how can we listen to God's voice if we don't know him? And that is why the body of Christ is so important, because they have made some very big mistakes. The biggest mistake is never to admit that they were wrong. And that sounds almost like President Trump. And if you are a person that will never admit that you were wrong, you will have a hard time understanding what I'm sharing with you. Because the way we were raised, the way we were brought up, that will stay with you for most of your life. It will dictate the way you will make a living. It will dictate the way you will be living. It will dictate an awful lot of things of you, your family, your children, your friends. But if you are willing to take a turn around and have a, basically a paradigm shift. The paradigm shift means that from you go from the right hand side all the way to the left. Or maybe you're all the way on the left hand side and you have to go to the right. Or maybe stick in the middle. But somewhere, somehow, if you are willing to accept the fact that you are not perfect. If you are willing to accept the fact that you can change. That you need to change. That you need help then I can help you. Yes, folks. You see, I had that same problem. But when I faced my problem, I was sitting out a six year term in prison. I had everything before, being a preacher, being, invol being involved for 12 years in a ministry, got, got to my own businesses and blah, 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 blah. But at one time, success also attracts a lot of other stuff, jealousy. People that are going to go after you no matter what. In my case, it was a friend. We were friends for over 10 years. He was living in a big house in London, Ontario, 15,000 square foot home, beautiful, prestigious. And we were friends. We worked together. I did business plans for him. We did businesses together. We sold stuff. And eventually I got a hold of some documents worth billions of dollars. And when I needed to raise a couple of million dollars to get my hands on it, he suggested that we would do it his way. His house was beautiful, way bigger than mine. He lived in a beautiful area. His name was very prestigious at that time. That was in uh, the year 1999. But he had one condition. He wanted half of everything I would earn. And that was something I had to think about. And the more I thought about it, I said, no, sorry, I can't do that. Because I have picked a hundred people that I want to help. I rather work with a hundred people that have never really made a million dollars in their life. And that would be a great honor if I can do that. And he got so mad. He said, Bob, if you get out of that door, and that was a big, huge door that he had there, beautiful door. He said, if you walk out of that door, you will never ever come back. And I will make sure that you will see how much power I have. See, my friend was a Freemason, the head of the Freemasons. At that time, I knew the name. I didn't really know the impact. And as I went through my procedure and I raised the money and the Lord provided and I got the paperwork signed over and everything got done, we kept on running into constant problems because I did not know how the Freemasons were set up. Men and women of honorable positions were all in his team. He was the head of them, so he could order them to do whatever he needed and wanted to have done. And I run into problem after problem. No matter that I spent $10 million on lawyers, he kept on coming back because they required to obey the leader. And that is how I came to write a book about this. I started to understand what Freemasons were. I discovered that the Freemasons are in the Vatican. The Freemasons are in politics. The Freemasons are in the banking system. And I can go on and on and on, but that's not important. What I did discover was everything I learned was based on certain principles. And those principles have been screwed around a bit. Because in 325, that is where Christianity started, not when Jesus was born. I found out that Jesus, his name was not Jesus. His name was Jesua HaMashiach. Yes, it sounds 
a little bit like Jesus, if you're really drunk and you have no clue what you're doing. But, you know, let's assume that we accept the fact that Jesua won't bother you calling him by his nickname, Jesus. But in 325 AD, there were no Christians either. Because the Christians, I found out, were other people. And this is what I'm sharing with you today, folks. It is so important to go back to the foundation. Because what I learned in court was, although I won a case, I lost the case. I lost on appeal. But then the next time I won on, on appeal, after I was sentenced for six years. You see, there is a problem in our life. If we have a lack of understanding, then it can cost us very much. And Jesua gave us an, an example of ten virgins. Five were very wise and five were foolish. And I talked about it the other time. But I want to share with you folks, there is so much more. Your life can change. I am free now, set free. I'm also 71 or going on 71. And I tell you, we were made to live forever. But the way we are living today in our society, in our churches, the way we are living contrary to what God wants, we are making our lifespan very short. We can be healthy. We can be free of diseases. A pandemic is something that we can bring under the power of God. Because God will teach us how to overcome those problems. That's why he gave the example of the prodigal son. The prodigal son that is you and me. If we are lost, if we are without God, if we don't. It's not because I joined the Pentecostal church or I became a Roman Catholic. That has nothing to do with it, folks. That is what we made out of it. It feels so good to sit in a pew and do nothing. But God wants us to be his children. And his children interact with the Father. And the Father means also if I goof up, I goofed up. And I for ask God, forgive me, Father. Abba, I failed. I fell with my face flat in the manure of the pigs. Forgive me. And Abba will say, come on, son, I love you. I'm so grateful that you finally come to your senses. He doesn't want to know that you are Pentecostal, Seven Days Adventist, or you are a an, an, an Mormon, or you are whatever religion you have found. Those are little things that will help you to form your mind, to get some principles in your life. But the reality is God, the Father, is looking for the fellowship of his children. He created us. He gave us a body. He gave us a mental capacity that we could communicate. And he made us spiritual. But before Adam and Eve could activate the spiritual part, the Lord had to cut them off because otherwise they would be lost forever. And by doing so, they sided with Satan. And when Satan got what he wanted, the disobedience, he created a religion that sounds incredible and it's called Christianity. It's a pagan Christianity, folks, in 325. And there are people that are stressing this. They will tell you all about it. And I can share with you. But I shared enough in the other videos that I just want to focus on the end term. It doesn't matter who you are. If you come to the same understanding that you need more, why not repent and say, Father, show me what do I need to do? Because God the Father himself, he will teach you. Isn't it awesome? I don't need to teach you. I can sow some seed and share with you what God will do for you. But you will find that God personally, he is your father. He will make you powerful. Why? Because power with God is different than power in this world. See, I can be laying flat on my face and being an overcomer. Because I am more than an overcomer. And that is because of God's love. And because he said, I give you the small path, the narrow way, the truth, the way, the truth and the light. And God is going to share with us how that light can grow and flourish. But you need to be able and willing to admit, I was wrong. Now I understand the biggest problem of Mr. Trump was to even admit that he was wrong. In insurgents, not my fault. This, and maybe you are like that. Maybe you said, I don't want to hear what you're saying. That is okay. But I want to share something with you. Tough times never last, but tough people do. 
I've been inside and I've prayed with many inmates before I got sentenced myself. And having been sentenced, it is an awesome pleasure. When I say an awesome pleasure to be able to say, I was raised in a church, I got kicked out of a church three times in different sections, and I tell you, I got accepted by God Almighty. And if you are in a position like that, if you don't know what you need to do, maybe this will help, because God loves you so much. All I had to admit was, I was a prodigal son. If you want to find out more about it, please contact me. And just think about it. To help in the YouTube world the way it is going, just subscribe. That will be suffice for me to get some other things moving. But in the meantime, I urge you folks, pay attention because life is awesome. We can live forever, now. We don't have to have the hurry and the pain and the sorrow, but it has been sold in a very nice package. Always go back to the basics. Always find out what are the basics. And if you understand the basics, then you understand what I'm talking about. Tough times never last, but tough people do. God bless you. Bye for now.
Thank you.